students of class 8A and 8B, you are welcome to this class, History and Civics. The points I have mentioned in the board one by one, there are five points. I shall explain it one by one after one with copious examples. Before explaining the points, I would like to show you the number of points mentioned in the board. Please look at it. Here are the points. Please look at it. The name of the topic is Rise of Rise of Indian Nationalism and the Indian National Movement. Rise of Nationalism and the Indian National Movement, 1885 to 1916. Here there are points. Number one, impact of modern education. Number two, economic conditions. Number three, role of press and literature. Number four, repressive policies of Lord Lytton. And number five, Vernacular Press Act. So these are the points. Now first point, impact of modern education. Now I am going to clarify. Impact of modern education, my dear students. The British introduced a new system of education for the people of India in order to create English educated Indians so that they could serve British administration and British could drain Indian wealth and money to their own country, England. But the introduction of modern education had left some impacts on Indian society. Because the introduction of modern education was one of the most significant contributions of the British that led to the growth of Indian nationalism. The people of India were innocent. Earlier, the people of India were innocent. They did not have any knowledge of the concept of nationalism. But after the introduction of modern education by the British, the Indian people gained the knowledge of nationalism. It brought about a profound intellectual transformation. And of course, the people of India and the modern system of education brought Indians in touch with the works of great, great you know, European uh, uh, thinkers, social workers, and uh, of course, reformers. They, their writings, their, you know, uh, uh, books uh, brought the people of India, brought the people of India contact with it and they came to know about their writings, about their system of writings about their uh, uh, political uh, uh, political concepts each and every part uh, which was which were written by the political thinkers of europe the people of india they came to know from it who were they they were john milton they were thomas paine burke j.s mill spencer locke russo mezzini it helped them to imbibe the ideas of liberty equality and fraternity and democracy and national freedom. The pioneers of Indian nationalism were moved by the aspirations for the self-government in India, political power and national representative institutions. All this had happened because of the reason the people of India showed their interest to receive Western education, to receive, you know, a modern system of education from the British. And the British, you know, helped them to be united because the concept of Indian nationalism. And second point, my dear students, economic conditions. Second point, economic conditions. What is economic conditions? What was about the condition of the people of India? Earlier, the condition of the Indian people was good. 
because they could earn a lot of mo- minimum amount of money they could earn from their uh, you know uh, from their cottage industries but as soon as the british introduced modern system of uh, industrial uh, policy and uh, into uh, and invented so many machines in their factories and industries for their factories and industries the machine made goods flooded indian large market as a result the artisans and craftsmen who are totally dependent on you know their incomes from their uh, cottage industries now they all became jobless people why because the uh, enormous supply of machine made goods from england occupied the large market of india as a result the people who were involved in earning money from their cottage industries they all became jobless people and not only that india was turned into an agricultural colony by the british to feed their factories in britain so the raw materials of india which were very much uh, superior in qualities the british started uh, collecting it from our country for their own country england in order to supply it in order to feed their factories and of course they started uh, supplying their finished products for india they exported indian uh, exported british made goods uh, to Engl- uh, to, uh, to india and at the same time india became an easy market for them machine made goods flooded the large market of india as i mentioned earlier so this system of drainage of wealth uh, done by the britishers you know made their country england prosperous rich and wealthy so india the british uh, made them rich and wealthy at the cost of indian money indian goods this drain of wealth from india led to the impoverishment of farmers artisans and workers alike which eventually led to a uh, to famines and destruction of indigenous industries as i mentioned earlier the cause Uh, it resulted in distress destruction of indian indigenous industries the artisans craftsmen who are totally dependent on their income from their handicap handy from their uh, cottage industries from their you know uh, small scale industries they now became jobless people because of the british manufactured goods captured the large market of india and the apathy of colonial government you know made educated indians realize that british had only vested interest in sight the prosperity of their homeland britain so the people educated people of india in course of time they realize that it should be immediately stopped otherwise the poverty would destruct the interior part of india and the backbone of the nation that's why immediately it should be stopped next point role of british role of press and literature sorry role of press and literature role of press and literature you know during national movement two important things took place in india it became helpful to the indians the role of the press and literature Indian press encouraged the political thinkers political awakening among the indians they implemented the spirit of nationalism by highlighting the exploitative policies of the british and not only that most of the people of india uh, they they already received western education and they now realize the intention of the british what was about their intention what did they want to do the people educated people came to know from it and some of the leading torch bearers of the press were you know a number of you know magazines a number of newspapers were published by the indian writers these were indian mirror um, uh, these were amrita bazar patrika kesari maratta and many others so despite many restrictions the leading newspapers continued denouncing the british government and their policies and it became possible only because of the literary activities activities of the indian writers poets and distinguished persons who dedicated their lives for the upliftment of indian 
traditional people who wanted to be self-sufficient at the cost of themselves, but the British obstructed their way of development. And in the field of economic prosperity, no, no development, no growth sold, no great, no uh, development and growth found. Why? Because the British remained busy in draining Indian wealth at the cost of Indian market and Indian uh, Indian people. That's why they became, uh, you know, that's why the uh, uh, poets, the writers, the distinguished uh, literary uh, activities of different writers had become great, uh, became a boon, became a source of inspiration for the people, for the revolutionaries, for the, you know, uh, <coughs> people who decided, who took an oath to sacrifice fight their life for the sake of motherland. That's why these writers became popular as they voiced the demands of the common people. And not only that, literary works also played an important role. It ignited Indian nationalism, the writings of Rabindranath Tagore, the writings of Bunkim Chandra Chattopadhyay, you know, uh, Prem Chand, Vishnu Shastri, and etc., etc., et developed the feelings of nationalism among them, the sense of nationalism, the sense of patriotism, the sense of love and human uh, sense of love and sympathy for the motherland encourage them to come to to come under one umbrella that's why the role of uh, literary activities and press played an important role during that period and next one repressive policies of lord lytton next point repressive policies of lord ripon repressive policies of lord ripon Lord Ripon, you know, as a viceroy, decided to uh, make a number of repressive policies. He didn't care for any Indians because he realized that the interest of the British should be safeguarded in India. Since the British government, since the British, uh, British company had sent him to be the head of the country, his first and foremost duty would be to safeguard the interest of the British. That's why he didn't care for any Indians, he didn't care for the interest of Indians. And as a result, he looked down upon the Indians and uh, for that reason, a number of uh, repressive policies he passed. Number one, Bharnakular Press Act. It was passed in the year 1878 and it, uh, there are so many restrictions imposed on the newspapers. Earlier, the newspaper uh, could uh, criticize the British. The, criticize the policies of the British government through vernacular languages. But the British could not understand the meaning of vernacular language. The British knew only English, but no vernacular language, no concept of vernacular languages. But the Indian people started criticizing the British government and their repressive policies through their vernacular languages. Vernacular languages like Bengali, Oriya, Assamese, you know, Gujarati, Marathi, and so many vernacular languages are there from different states. They started publishing their newspapers through vernacular languages. British could not understand. And through other sources, the British would come to know that what they were doing was against them. They were criticizing the British government and it encouraged, it discouraged the people, the Indian nationalism. And only for that reason, the British decided to stop that activities of the Indian people. How? They passed one act. That act is known as the Vernacular Press Act. And for that reason, the Vernacular Press Act was unanimously criticized by the Indian people because it uh, obstructed the way of uh, writing. It obstructed the way of literary works and literary activities of the people of India, of the writers of India. Only uh, because they start, they criticize, they were criticizing the British, uh, the British repressive policies, and that's why newspapers condemn British policies, and then the press also was denied freedom of expression under the Vernacular Press Act. And next point, the Arms Act. You know, another one was repressive policy, Vernacular Press Act. I discuss before discussing Arms Act. I would like to analyze Vernacular Press Act because this is the last point I don't want to discuss today. Uh, the Arms Act, Arms Act will be discussed next day. Today, uh, up to Vernacular Press Act, I discussed. So, what was the role of the press? 
in developing a sense of nationalism among the indians does the press play the sense of uh, responsibility does the press play the same uh, role even now it is not possible because the most important factor is the people realize that the indian uh, uh, you know uh, uh, newspaper the indian newspaper would play a vital role in uh, teaching the british a good lesson and for that reason the british uh, the britishers were uh, the britishers were ashamed uh, sorry the britishers the britishers felt very much irritation they were irritated and for that reason the british Uh, impose many restrictions on the vernacular press act and pass that very act and ultimately that vernacular press act uh, was uh, uh, was uh, criticized by the people of india and what happened to them next day i shall discuss about it uh, i shall discuss from the arms act onwards up to this my dear students uh, this brings me to the end of today's uh, teaching and uh, please stay connected with me for my next class and uh, i hope uh, that uh, you will be able, uh, you have enjoyed a lot of uh, today's class if you have any problem any difficulty you let me know i shall help you as fast as possible during my live class thank you so much till then goodbye bye bye